Hello, this is Mr. Buffington looking at polynomials today. We're going to do a little bit of vocabulary. Um, not a lot of math in this lesson. We're just going to try and understand what a polynomial is and what a polynomial isn't. And that will help us in our future lessons when we start adding, multiplying, dividing, factoring polynomials. So first off, we just need to be on the same page as to what a polynomial actually is. So first off, a polynomial defined. It's one or more monomials joined together using addition and subtraction. That's it. And if that could be our whole lesson, that would be amazing. But for us to understand this definition at all, we have to understand what a monomial is. Because if you're joining together one or more monomials to make a polynomial, we have to know what a monomial is and what a monomial isn't. All right. A monomial is a number, variable, or combination of number and variable where all the exponents are whole numbers and no, um, no exponents in the denominator, no variables at all actually in the denominators. So let's take a look at um, some examples of what monomials actually are. Here's some um, examples, five examples of monomials. Um, notice this one here, 9n. All right, well, here's one even more simple, 3. It's the most simple type of monomial, just a number. You could also just have a variable, a, <laughs> 3, a. Those are examples of monomials. They are just um, terms that have numbers or variables or a combination, 9n, 2x squared. Now, when we start getting into having exponents, we have something else we need to look at. The exponent has to be a whole number. It can't be a fraction, a decimal, a negative, all right, for a monomial. So the constant or coefficient here, negative 5, that's fine. Negative 5 can be a negative. It can be a fraction. It can be a decimal, all right? These are fine as long as the exponents on the variables are whole numbers. So a, b, c four, to the power of 14. A has an exponent of 1, B has an implied exponent of 1, C has an exponent of 14. That's fine. X has a power of 5, Y has a power of 4. That's fine. This one here has no variable. That's fine too. So here are some examples of non-monomials. Again, any uh, variable in the denominator is not going to work. Because remember, what does that mean when we have a, um, N in the denominator? we can move that up and it would become n to the power of negative 1. If we remember the rules for negative exponents. We can't have a negative exponent. That's the same as this one here. Negative exponents don't work. Not a monomial. This one here, the negative 3 fifths, that's fine. A is fine. C to the power of 3 is fine. But it's b to the power of 1 half that makes this one here not a monomial. Again, you can't have a fraction or an um, a negative number as your exponent. x to the power of two-thirds does not work. All right? So those are examples of non-monomials. And again, when we go back to our original definition, a polynomial is a series of monomials joined together with addition or subtraction. So here is an example, a really kind of funky example, with fraction um, coefficients but our variables all fit. You know, whole number exponents, exponents are fine on that. This is an example of a polynomial. This one here is a more uh, standard polynomial that you'll see, something like this, 9n plus 2, or 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. These are a little bit more standard. You typically won't see as many fractions as I put in this one, but you can. That is an example of a polynomial, all right? And also, I just want to point out that when you have two monomials, there's a special name for that. It's called a binomial. All right, so this is a binomial because it has two terms or two monomials inside of a polynomial. This one here, as you might guess, with three terms would be called a trinomial. All right, both of which are types of polynomials, but they have special names because we, we're going to be using binomials and, poly and uh, trinomials quite a bit. All right. Now let's um, look at one more thing before we end this kind of vocabulary lesson today. 
And that's the degree of a polynomial. The degree of a polynomial is the highest degree of any monomial in that polynomial. Again, we're going to have to move backwards. How do you find the degree of a monomial? Well, let's take a look at that. The degree of a monomial is when you add up the exponents for the variable. Here's an example of a monomial 3xy to the power of 3z to the power of 4. You add up the exponent. So I would add up the exponent for x would be an implied 1 plus the exponent for y, which is 3, plus the exponent for z, which is 4. 1 plus 3 plus 4 is 8. Now, that means the degree of this monomial is 8. Another way of looking at it is it'd be x times y times y times y times z times z times z times z, times z four times did I say z times z times z times z. There we go. And then you would count the number of variables. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. All right? So you can think of it that way as well. But um, for me, it's just easier to add the exponents than to actually write it all out. But you can write it out if you'd like. All right? So that is the degree of a monomial. Remember, the degree of a polynomial is the largest degree for any of the monomials inside of the polynomial. So let's go ahead and find, this is good practice for us, to actually find the degree of each of these terms and then, and then the largest one will be the degree of our polynomial. So first off, 3x to the power of 5. That one's pretty easy. We have one variable, so our exponent is 5. That's going to be the degree. The degree of this monomial is 5. Let's look at this one. x to the power of 2, y to the power of 2, or x squared, y squared. 2 plus 2 is 4. That's the degree of that monomial. Let's look at the next one. x, y to the power of 2, or x, y squared. x, again, has an implied 1 plus 2 will give us the degree of 3. This one here, x squared y, is the same. It's 2 plus 1, which is also 3. And any number at the end, this is called just the constant, at the end, it has no variable. So it would have an exponent, or um, a degree, I'm sorry, of 0. If you had just the letter x on the end, that would have the degree of 1. We don't have that in this example. But just a number by itself has the degree of 0. All right? So the degree of this polynomial is 5 because the largest monomial is 5. We don't add these all up and say that's the degree of our polynomial. That's the biggest mistake people make, most common mistake. The degree of the polynomial in this case is 5 because the largest degree of any monomial is 5. All right, and that's how we determine the degree of a polynomial. That's an important point. All right, now, again, last thing. I said last thing before, but this is the, really the last thing. Polynomials are written in order with the highest degree monomial first and the rest written in, um, in decreased order. So here's an example of a polynomial written completely out of order. And what we would need to do for this is to find the degree of each monomial and then write them in order from the highest monomial to the lowest. So we look at that. What's the degree of 7x? Well, it's got x just to the power of 1, so that the degree of 7x would be 1. So that's going to be our first, well, the first one that we discover, 1. Negative 5x to the power of 3 has a degree of 3. 4x or 4y to the power of 5 has a degree of 5. 1 has a degree of 0. And 5xy has a degree of 2. Again, it's like x to the power of 1, y to the power of 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. Okay? So those are the degrees of each of these monomials. So to write them in order, we're going to have to switch this around. And what we would end up with is 4y to the power of 5, that's going to be our first term. Negative 5x to the power of 3 will be our second, because that has a degree of 3. Negative 5xy has a degree of 2. 7x has a degree of 1. And then that one constant at the end, 1, has a degree of 0. 
So we write them in descending order. Now, um, I also want to point something out here that um, that with these the numbers out front, oftentimes people will look at that. Those numbers don't matter. It's just the degree of each monomial. All right? And also the negatives, notice that the negatives went with the term. So negative 5x to the power of 3, that negative stayed with the term. Negative 5xy stayed with the term. That's some other common mistakes when we're kind of shifting around um, monomials within a polynomial. So that is it for understanding polynomials. Look at the next couple of lessons where we're going to actually start adding and subtracting and multiplying and factoring polynomials. That's when algebra starts to get really exciting.